pass, and we're all ready to go. Bright day, warm sun, and uh, we should have a lot of speed out there on the field. These teams have relied on it all season. Al, I think you'll see a lot of fast running today. Brevin, uh, everyone here is expecting we'll see a lot of it. The ball is being teed up now on the Stanford 40-yard line, from which point Wilkinson will kick off for Stanford. Let's see, we have Storm, Vic, Malugian, Garner, Bonetti, Pyle, and McCord in the forward wall for Stanford. Let's see, it's going to be Bob Myers kicking off instead. Bob Myers will kick off instead of, of uh, okay, so, so we're ready to go. Bob Myers, the starting fullback to kick off. Roll the ball and blows the whistle. Here comes Myers forward, moving up to the 40-yard line, boots the ball, deep in the South Territory. Going back to pick the ball up on the far on the 10-yard line as Johnny Karras is back to the 20. Hit at the 20-yard line, spins, goes over to the 25, and drops down on the 25-yard line. Hit, and hit very hard by Roy Eady. Now let's see for the offensive backfield for... The offensive backfield for the Pony Line they are on their own, make it 19-yard line. On the 19-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois as they huddle. We have Tom McCollum in the backfield at quarterback, about halfback, Pete McCorris. At right halfback is Johnny Karras, the fullback is Bill Tate. Up to the line of scrimmage now, the tight team in the backfield behind the balanced line. A flanker out to the right this time as he moves on the signal being called. The ball is taken by Connell, it's a feed off. To his left halfback, McCorris, to the left side of the line, over the 20. Five and up to about the 27-yard line with Al Kirkland making the stop along with Jesse Cohen defensively for Stanford. There's a Stanford defensive team in the lineup right now in the ball game right now. The lineup is Jack Rye at left end. We have Nathan at tackle, King and Cole at the guards, and we also have Cook in the ball game. Kirkland and Edie in the forward wall. In the backfield, backing up, we have Ted Tanner and Chuck the seat. Tight team, Illinois backfield. They send a flanker out to the right once more on their second down on their own 27-yard line. The ball is snapped back. There's a fake pitch out and a handoff again. Of course, he's to the right side. Up to his own 35. Still in his feet to the 40. Up to the 45-yard line. Hit and drop at his own 46-yard line. Finally, Dick Horn, defensive left halfback of Stanford, was able to make the tackle. So it's going to be at first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 46-yard line. They took that ball from the 19 to their 46-yard line for 27 yards. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. The ball is equidistant between sidelines on the Illinois 46-yard line. Up to the line of scrimmage now. Tight T in the backfield and they hike out of it. They do send a flanker out to the left as the end to the left splits wide. The ball comes back to O'Connell. He feeds it off to Carlos. He's right around the left side up to the 50-yard line. Hit it to 50. Spins and drives over to the 47-yard line in the territory of Stanford before Roy Eady, defensive right end of Stanford, is able to make the stop. So let's see, that ball is brought from the 46-yard line in Illinois territory over to the 47-yard line in the territory of Stanford. Coming up for Illinois, and they have just about two yards to gain. Second and about two and a half. Ball about 15 yards into the sideline on this side of the field. There's a flanker out wide to the right, that's Johnny Karras. The end splits wide to the right. Ball comes back, and there is a feed off to the fullback. Tate is through the middle of the line, up to the 30-yard line, still on his feet, to the 20. And he's down to the 10-yard line, finally hit and dropped by Dick Horn on the Stanford 5-yard line. Bill Tate on a delayed line, but hitting the right side of the line, right through right guard, cut back over on this side of the field, ran down the sideline, and makes it first down, 5, and goal to go for Illinois on the Stanford 5-yard line. Now let's see, that ball went from the 47-yard line down to the 5-yard line for 42 yards. 42 yards. It's first five and goal now for Illinois. There's a hike out to the right. See in the backfield. And the ball is being given down to Buck. We'll see he's cut back on the 8-yard line behind the line of scrimmage. Cut back on the 8-yard line. So he'll lose three on that play. It's second down coming up. Second down coming up and about... Six yards to go, second and six. Second six and goal for Illinois. Back in the huddle goal, Illinois. Signals are being called out now by quarterback Trumbo Connell. More from Chicago South, sophomore at Illinois, behind the balance line. Sends his flanker out to the right, that is Johnny Karras. Man in motion out to the left. There is a pitch back to Buckers. He's up to the line of scrimmage. Hits the line and opening goes for touchdown for Illinois.
Duke Buckeris from the seven yard line on the pitch out swinging right around the left end with Bill Tate in motion in front of him to give him downfield blocking. Duke Buckeris makes a touchdown for Illinois. Sam Rebecca, the senior from Rockford, Illinois, and specialist at the point after touchdown has come in. He's going to try for the extra point. To hold the ball will be Don Engels. Don Engels, substitute quarterback, will come in to hold the ball for Sam Rebecca. Don Engels from Chicago, he's a senior. Ready to have the ball snapped back by Dan Sabino, the center. The score is 6 to nothing in favor, Illinois, over Stanford. The opening moments of the Rose Bowl game here at Pasadena. The ball is snapped back, placed on the ground, the wreck moves forward, it's blocked. It's blocked by John Sanders of Stanford as he came charging in from his flight position. So it's a block kick for the extra point, and that means that it's a 6 to nothing ball game in favor of Illinois. And say, while they're waiting, man, to uh, line up, I'd just like to say that shaving's a lot easier and more convenient with the Gillette Super Speed Razor. Rudy Valentino is ready to kick off for Illinois. On the whistle, he moves forward to the 40, boots the ball deep into Stanford territory. Down to the five-yard line, it's being taken by Mathias. He's coming over on the sideline, is hit and dropped finally on the 15-yard line. Comes back for about 10 yards as Bershay, defensive left tackle, makes the stop. So let's see, the ball is actually on the 16-yard line. Actually on the 16-yard line of Stanford. First down and 10 yards to go. Bob Myers comes back in at fullback. For Stanford, out goes Mathias. We have Ron Cook at right halfback. Harry Hugesian at left halfback. There is a flank tee out to the left this time. The ball comes back and is handed off by the quarterback to Harry Hugesian. He's through the left side of the line, over his left guard, up the 20-yard line to the 24-yard line. Before Chuck Borio, backing up the right side of the Illinois line, is able to make the stop. So the ball is moved up from the 16-yard line up to the 24-yard line for a substantial gain. There is another hand off in the backfield. This time it is 2-1, Cook the right halfback, and he tries to spin his way through the right side of the line, gets up to the 25, is hit at the 25-yard line, but Don Ernst, the right guard of Illinois, is stopped at that point. That means the third down will be coming up with three to go for Stanford. There are 15 yards in the sideline on this side of the field. Six to nothing in favor of Illinois. Now we'll see. Tight team this backfield this time for Stanford. There is a handoff. Very quickly to Bob Myers who pounds through the right side of the line. He may have come up enough to make it a first down, but there's a fumble down there, I believe. And we'll see who has recovered it. Myers, the fullback, pounding through the right side of the line. The official, Raleigh Barnum, has come in to place the ball on the ground. It looks as though it may be on about the 27-yard line. It is enough for a first down for Stanford. On the 27, first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford. On their own 27-yard line. They are 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. Six to nothing in favor of Illinois. There's a wide flanker going out to the left this time. That's Ron Cook in the T formation. There is a crossover handoff to Harry Hagazian, who tries to come through the middle of the line and is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Chuck Boreal backing up the right side of the Illinois line, along with Elit Popa, certainly have been cracking in there and moving in well and fast. Illinois using a 6 2 2 1 defense. It's uh, second down coming up now, and about nine yards to go. Second and about nine, there's a wide flanker going out to the left. That's Ron Cook from Stanford as the ball is taken by Kikoi. He fades back. He's being chased, then gets a pass off into the plot. On the far side, he'll in on the 30. He's up to his own 40 to the 44-yard line. Hit and knocked out of bounds of the headlines, but is also knocked down on the far side by a clip. On the 44-yard line, as Stan Wallace pushes him out of bounds on the 44-yard line. So there is a move from the 27 to the 44 of 17 yards for a first down for Stanford. So we're ready to go. Stanford having the ball, first down at 10 yards to go on their own 44, and a fine pass from Gary Kikorian, who right now comes out into the flat to the right on the T formation. He is the wide flank back. There is Kikori fading back, going along past downfield, and is completed to the call on the 50, and he struggles and fights his way to the 45, loses the ball, there's a scrap the whistle is already blown. It looks as though the whistle is already blown down on the Illinois 45 yard line, where it will be first down, 10 yards to go for Stanford from that point. First down of 10 yards to go from Sta for Stanford from their own 44 to the 45-yard line in Illinois territory for a gain of 11 yards on that forward pass. The ball is equidistant between sidelines on the Illinois 45-yard line. Out of the huddle come the Stanford Indians. On the T-formation, the white flanker out to the white. The end split wide. 
DeGray takes the ball along the delayed line bucket. It's Bob Myers hammering into the middle of the line. Gets nowhere, absolutely nowhere, with Marvin Bershay in there to roll under low and make the stop. So it's still 6 to nothing in favor of Illinois, and Stanford has opened their passing attack against the Illinois ball club. And time is being taken out by Illinois. Time being taken out by Illinois with the score standing 6 to nothing in favor of Illinois. Well, say, men, tough beard is no problem when you shave with the modern Gillette Super Speed razor. This razor always gives you smooth, spick and span shaves quickly and easily. What's more, ingenious one-piece construction makes it the most convenient type of razor money can buy. Yes, the Gillette Super Speed changes blades instantly, cleans instantly, and shaves like a charm. There's nothing to take apart or put together. Nothing to jam or clog, and every stroke is light and gentle. For a world of shaving ease and satisfaction, buy a Gillette Super Speed Razor. You'll get it with the 10-blade Gillette dispenser and a handsome styrene travel case that opens at a touch. Yes, men, and for this big dollar seventy-five value, you pay only a dollar at any convenience store. And we pause now, 10 seconds for station identification. Right back here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. We have a couple of substitutions for you. We'll give them to you in a moment. Right now, Kokorian is operating from the chief page off to the right. Shoots a pass out into the flat. That is completed. The big occasion. He's down to the 30-yard line in the territory of the Sunny Illini. A completed pass from Kokorian to Hagesian, the left halfback. He's down to the 30-yard line, moving from the 45 for a gain of 15 yards. And another first down and 10 yards to go. First and 10 for Stanford. On the Illinois 30-yard line, about 20 yards into the sideline across the way. Changes up front for uh, Stanford. A rather enough fullback for the safety man is Alfred Brusty, one of the fine ball players on defense. White flank tee out to the right this time for Stanford on first and ten. There is a handoff in the backfield. Going through the left side is Ron Cook. Taking the handoff, moving over the 30-yard line as Chuck Borio meets him at about the 28 and drops him. So it's second down coming up. Second down coming up. Let's see how much he did gain, actually. I believe a red flag went down on the field that time. We may have an unnecessary roughness penalty being charged against Stanford. We'll see that in just a moment. Where it'll be first down and 25 yards to go. First down, 25 yards to go for Stanford. They split the ends wide, send a flanker out to the left. That's Ron Cook. There is Kakorian fading back with the ball, looking for someone to pass to. He's being chased now. Runs off to the right, comes up to the 50-yard line. Stops, shoots one downfield, and is completed the big McCall on the 25-yard line. He's hit the drop immediately. Make it for 24. No wonder this boy McCall was an All-American. He's up high in the air, and a 225-pounder can really get in there and go. So that pass completed from the 45-yard line to the, actually, make it the 24-yard line for a 21-yard gain. A 21-yard gain in the first down, and a uh, second down, and just about three yards to go. Make it four yards to go. There's a flanker out to the left this time. Kerkorian takes the ball, fades off to the left. He's looking for someone to pass to. Fires it across the line. Finishes the play. He's on the 10-yard line. He steps back a couple of yards trying to get away from a tackler. He's hit and dropped on the 14. Let's see who made the tackle that time. It must have been Herb Nethery, the left halfback from Hoopson, Illinois. So it's enough for a first down. I believe, yes, enough for a first down for Stanford on the make it 13-yard line of Illinois. For Stanford on the... A line at 13. Wide flanker out to the right this time. Kokorian, the quarterback, takes the ball, hands it off to his left half back, Hogesian, who pounds into the 10-yard line. Hit it to 10 and falls forward to the 9. Bob Lenzini, defensive left guard of Illinois, was under that close and low to make the stop. The official places the ball, however, on the 8-yard line. Second down coming up at about 5 yards to go for Stanford. The flanker comes out wide to the right once more. McCall splits wide at right end. Kakoi in the center, takes the ball, hands it over this time to his left halfback, and that's Hugazian, he pounds through the left side, drives and butts his way up to the five, and that's where he stops at the five-yard line, he falls forward just over the five, nose in to the four-yard line, but it is just nose over the five, so actually we'll call it the five-yard line. It'll be third down coming up and just about a yard to go. The stop was made that time by Don Ernst and Bob Lenzini, the defensive guards of Illinois. Third and two. Third and about two for Stanford on the Illini five-yard line, and Illinois leads six to nothing. There's Kukoyan in a tight two in the backfield, handing off this time to Myers, the fullback. He drives up to the one-yard line and stopped at the one-yard line. So that's going to be enough for a first down. First down, one yard, goal to go for Stanford on the Illinois one-yard line. That was Bob Myers on a direct butt to the left side, screwing left guard and left tackle. 
driving over on the left side, 15 yards off from the sideline across the way. Kikorian, Gary Kikorian, the quarterback, has called his signals. Play team in the backfield. Let's see who handles. There is the left halfback of Gazian, through on the left side, over for a touchdown. in Pasadena, California with 4 minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the first period. The score is all tied up at 6-6. Six and six. Now let's see who's going to try for the extra point here. To hold the ball, it will be number 25, Hugazian, who just made the touchdown, and Gary Kikorian, the quarterback, will try for the extra point, and he very seldom ever misses. There is a red flag going down on the field as Illinois charges before the ball is snapped. From its original point, we're ready to go. Here is the snap to be made. Back to the ball handler. And there is the kick by the coin. It's good. The score is 7-6 to six in favor of Stafford. ready to go now with Stanford to kick off to Illinois. And he's been sitting over there chewing on his hat brim ever since it started. And I know he'll have plenty to say about this one. There's Myers forward on the whistle. Boots for Stanford down deep into Illinois territory. Johnny Karras over on the five-yard line on the far sideline. Takes a handoff as he comes scooting around the left side. Back to the 15. He's bottled in and knocked out of bounds on the 17-yard line on this side of the field by Cook. Cook from Modesto. Knocked him out of bounds. He was also helped on that play by Edie. So let's see now. It is first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. The ball is on their own, make it 18-yard line instead of 17 as the official moves it forward by about another yard. In the Illinois backfield, Tom O'Connell at quarterback. At left halfback, Pete Bacaris. At right halfback is Johnny Karras, and the fullback is Bill Tate. A flanker goes out to the right this time as O'Connell is getting ready to handle the ball. He hands it off this time to his fullback, Tate, who pounds to the right side of the line, over the 20, up to about the 22-yard line before he's stopped by Cook. And this boy, this boy, Hart Cook, is playing in the left, on the left side of the Stanford line. He's left guard. As I said a moment ago, he's a senior from Modesto, California. He's been in on most every tackle that has happened during the time he has been playing defense. There's a tight team in the backfield with a flanker moving out to the right. That's Karras. Ready for the ball to be snapped back to O'Connell. Back it comes. He takes a pitch up and hands it off to his fullback, Tate, who is through the left side of the line, drives, fights his way up to the 30. Still on his feet, still drives, and fights his way up to the 37. That's Cook. That's Cook making the stop along with Bob Latham. It's a first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 38-yard line. On the 38. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. Let's check the backfield once again for you. It's quarterback is O'Connell left Back is Pete Bacaris. At right half back is Karras. The full back is Tate. There is a flanker coming out to watch this time as the end splits wide for Illinois in first and ten. The ball is handed off this time to Johnny Karras, who swings off the wing, tries to come through the left side, and takes up just about one yard as he's stopped by the entire right side of the Stanford line, namely Cole, Kirkland, and Edie. So it is much of a gain on that one. Makes it second down coming up and eight yards to go for Illinois. The ball resting on their own 40 for a two-yard pickup. The ball is about 20 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. On the Illinois 40 in favor of Stanford over Illinois. The difference has been Kakarian's extra point. There's a flanker out once again to the right. Gong takes the ball, pitches back this time to his fullback. Tate who swings wide at the left side. Comes up to the 44-yard line and goes out of bounds at the 44 as he's finally pushed out of bounds by Bob Thompson, defensive right halfback of Stanford. Cook was also in on that play. Well, let's see. The ball has been moved up now to the 44-yard line for a gain of four yards. Makes it third down, and we still have about four yards to gain for Illinois. We have a substitute coming in for Stanford. We have Skip Christ coming in to back up the left side of the line, replacing Ted Tanner. 6-2-2-1 defense by Stanford. There's a... Right to the right, that's Johnny Karras as the end again splits wide. 
Rest of the backfield is in tight on the tee. There is a fake handoff, and finally the ball is given over to the fullback Tate. And he piles through the left side of the line. Bill Tate, 187-pounder from the tune, drives the ball up to the 50-yard line with Skip Crisp making the stop for uh, Stanford. The ball is right on the 50-yard line for a pickup this time, six yards. So let's see how uh, much that's going to be. Well, there's going to be a penalty inflicted on the Illinois at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, with the score standing 7-6 to six in favor of Stanford over Illinois. In kick formation, standing back on his own 20-yard line, we have, let's see, that's Tom O'Connell. Widespread formation, and O'Connell fades back, shoots a long pass way downfield. That is almost intercepted by the left halfback, Dick Horn, but he isn't able to get his hands on it back on his own quarter. That ball was intended for Rick Smith, the right end of Illinois. So it's fourth and about 17 yards to go for Illinois. The ball being brought back, and time is being taken out by Illinois. The ball is resting on their 31-yard line. It is Illinois' ball, fourth down and 17 yards to go with two minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the first period. Stanford leading Illinois, 7-6. to six. He plays second string uh, right half back or third string right half back on offense. Back in safety position, Sanders and Thompson, double safety for Stanford, standing back in the stand for 20 and 25, respectively. Hands out stretched down there on the 16 yard line. The ball comes back to Miller. The kid boots it. It's a high one coming downfield to the Stanford 35, bounces on the 35, rolling to the 30, kicks on back to the 25, crosses the 25, noses in, rolls down to the 18, and at the 17 yard line, rolls dead. 20 seconds left to play in the first period of a ball game that has Stanford out in front, 7 to 6. Now let's see, in the Stanford backfield, we have to call in Cook, Myers, and Hugazian. There is Ron Cook, way out wide on the flank on this T formation. There is Kikoyan feeding that ball off to his halfback, and his fullback Myers, who takes on the cross, but coming through the right side of the line, he's met by Chuck Borio, who really came in and dropped him. Right at the line of scrimmage. Harry Hugazian was also in on that play. He was trying to do a little blocking. This Borio really came in. I want you to know that Borio bores in. Now we're ready to go here with Stanford moving. He'll send the wide flanker out to the left. That's Cook. There is a handoff this time to Harry Hagazian through the left side of the line, up to his own 25, hitting, spins away from two men, and drives the ball up to his own 27-yard line. Up to the 27-yard line for a pickup of just about 10 yards. And it's just close enough that the officials are going to have to measure to see whether or not it is a first down. With a minute and 38 seconds left to play, in the first period of a ball game. Let's see, it's being measured, it is short. Let's call it one yard again, although it's actually about a foot. The ball resting down there on the 27 yard line, just about the 27 yard line, 15 yards in the side on the side of the field. Tight tee in the backfield this time. There's the ball being handed off to Hagazian, and he hurdles the line over the 30, and makes it a first down on about the Stanford 31-yard line with Bob Waddell of Webster Groves, Missouri, the junior 210, making the stop for Illinois. It's going to be a first down of four Stanford on their own 31-yard line. First 10 Stanford on their own 31. Score 7 to 6 in favor of Stanford over Illinois with a minute and 12 seconds left to play in the first period. Flanker out to the left is Ron Clark this time on the T formation split wide. There is Kikorian fading back. He's getting protection. Now he suddenly bottled up, gets more protection, and he's finally straight under a knockdown back on his own 26-yard line. Chris Wellbeater, the right end, came filtering through and made the stop on the 26. So there's a loss from the 31 back to the 26 to 5 yards. It'll make the second down come up 15 yards to gain for Stanford. They are 15 yards into the sideline across the way on their own 26. We have about 40 seconds left to play in the first period of the ball game. 7 to 6, favor of Stanford. There's a wide flanker coming out to the right again. It is Cook. Kakari up tight. Gary calls his signal. Feeds the ball off to Hagazian again on a fake handoff to his fullback. Hagazian coming across in the cross box. Takes the ball and goes through the center of the line with Chuck Borio there to meet him. So it'll be third and 15 coming up. Third down and 15 yards coming up for Stanford. The ball is about 15 yards into the sideline across the way. McCall splits wide this time up front. He's the All-American right end. Tight clean in the backfield. McCoy takes the ball, fades back. He's looking for McCall. Here comes a long pass downfield to him. McCall juggles the ball and finally takes it. Finally takes it on the 50-yard line. Steps out on the 49-yard line of Illinois. Big McCall gets that pass completed on the 49-yard line for a 20-yard forward motion. It's a first down and 10 yards to go. 
A first and ten. First down and ten yards to go for Stanford on the Illini 49 as Bob Mathias comes back in the backfield at fullback, relieving Bob Myers. Bob Mathias, the junior from Tulare, the decathlon champion. And there, everybody, is the end of the first period of the ball game. It's seven to six in favor of Stanford over Illinois. And fans, the best way to get tough beard ready for smooth, easy shaving is to give it a quick workout. Yes, and it keeps the bacteria count down. Enjoy James and our shave. Use K-34. On a swing off to the left this time, Gary Kikorian carrying the ball. Swings wide to his left, moves down to the 40-yard line, is hit by Chuck Borio, backing up the line, and goes out of bounds on the 39-yard line in Illinois territory, and it is a first down. So it's first down and 10 yards to go. First and 10 for Stanford on the Illini's 39-yard line. 15 yards in the sideline on this side of the field. And we're having a substitute coming in the ball game. That's going to be Larry Stevens. Larry Stevens coming in for Wolbezer. Larry Stevens coming into the ball game. Wide flanker out to the right this time. On a first and ten for Stanford. There is Kikorian on the running pass over to the right. Have it knocked out of bounds by the defensive halfback of Illinois, Herb Nethery. Herb Nethery knocked the ball out of bounds. It was intended for Ron Cook, the right halfback, on a wide flat downfield pass. And on the 30-yard line, knocked out of bounds. Well, let's see now. Coming out. Coming out is Harry Hedavian. Bob Myers is coming in the ball game. Bob Myers in the ball game. So we have Matthias fullback now for Stanford. Bob Myers is playing halfback. He's the boy from Van Nuys. He's going out on the wing right now, out on the flat. From the people, mission, there's a pitch out. So Bob Matthias, it's a wide swing around the right side. Matthias is cut back on the 45-yard line, making the 44. As Larry Stevens came nicely in and crossed over to drop in there and make the grab on the 44-yard line. So that ball's moved back from the 39 to the 44. So there's a loss of uh, five yards. On the far sideline, on the hash marker, or the inbounds marker from the far sideline, the ball is placed on the 44-yard line. Pulled down about 15 yards to go for Stanford. Sam Morley comes in at left end for Stanford, replacing Bill Storum. There is the coin fading back, going a long pass down the field and out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Intended for Sam Morley of San Marino. He's a sophomore. Larry Stevens had come over there along with him. Larry Stevens of Robinson, Illinois. He's a junior. Goes back defending. Now Dick Horn. 44 yard line. Dick Horn is apparently coming in to do the punting. It's fourth down and 15 yards to go for Stanford on the Illinois 44. There is Dick Horn going back in kick formation. He's a senior from Santa Monica. Standing back on the Stanford 42 yard line. Hands out stretched. The ball is snapped back by Garner. He boots the ball, angles it to the corner. And going back is Bruski watching the ball bounce into the end zone. And of course, first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own play. Up to the line of scrimmage, they come. Tight team in the backfield right now. They may shift out of it. They do. Send a flanker out to the left this time. There is O'Connell, the Chicago boy, taking the ball, faking the pitch off, and then does hand off to Terrace, who tries to come through the right side of the line. Moves down to the line of scrimmage and falls forward one yard after he's met by Kirkland and by Latham. So it's no gain actually on the play, so put the ball again on the 20-yard line, move its position over about five yards to the sideline across the way, and make it the second down coming up for Illinois, and still 10 yards to gain. Got about 13 and a half minutes left to play in the first half of the ball game. Um, O'Connell calling the signals again behind the Illinois line. It's balanced. There's a hike to the left this time with a flanker going out to the left. The ball is taken and handed off this time to Karras. Right sweep around the left hand. Karras up near the 25-yard line as he cracks back from his interference. Johnny Karras is met at the 25-yard line and dropped by Skip Christ and also by Bob Thompson in the defensive setup for Stanford in the 6-2-1 defense. That's Skip Christ backing up the left side of the line. And Aaron Sanders is playing defensive left halfback. The Illinois ball club comes out of the huddle up to the line of scrimmage. Sends a flanker out to the right this time. Ready for the ball to be snapped back to O'Connell. He gets it, fades back, hands the ball over this time to Pete Buckers. Buckers through the right side of the line as he follows a one-man interference. Cracks off tackle, but picks up just about one yard as the hole finally closes with Hokesian coming in there. Hokanson, rather. Well, let's say the ball is resting now on the 27-yard line. Move up to the 27-yard line where it'll be fourth down and about two yards to go. 
Ball on the 27-yard line in Illinois territory. They have about two yards to gain here, so they'll probably go back in kick formation. Let's see, it'll be Ken Miller. He's just come into the ball game. Ken Miller, the punter, sophomore. He's standing back on the Illinois 14-yard line. There is Sanders and Thompson in double safety for Stanford. They're back on the Stanford 30-yard line right now, spread across the field. We're ready now for the ball to be snapped back to Miller. It is snapped back to him. He gets the boot away. It's a nice one coming downfield. Starts to wobble a bit now. Bounces on the 40. Moves down to the 30-yard line. The ball is still rolling end over end and goes to a stop on the 23-yard line. Bob Mathias apparently is remaining in at fullback. No. Oh, is that right? Mathias at fullback? Yes, he is. He's in there at fullback. Now from the T formation, the ball is being handed off to Bob Mathias, who tries to crack over the right side. And he's stopped by Andy Wojciak and Marvin Bershay. Andy Wojciak and Marvin Bershay. Wojciak from Chicago, Bershay from Arlington Heights. So the play actually lost a yard for Stanford. It means that um, they're back on their 22-yard line with second down about... ...seven yards to gain. About 20 yards into the sideline across the way as they send a flanker out on that sideline in the tee in the backfield. McCoy takes the ball, fades back, shoots a pass across the line, scrimmage to Mathias on the 25, he's in the clear on the 30, finally cut from behind and the side on the 34-yard line by Wojciak and dropped. Bob Mathias, who has been having trouble with his ankle recently, wasn't able to get away despite the fact that the pass was completed to him and he went nicely down to his own 34-yard line. It's still a first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford. Down on the 34-yard line of Stanford. That was a gain now, about 12 yards on that one. So it's first and 10 for Stanford as the red and white team comes out up to the line of scrimmage on the 30. The ball equals between sidelines on their 34. Let's see, there's Krikorian fading back again, shoots the pass out in the front again, intended for Mathias, and it's over his fingertips untouched. Untouched. So the ball will be brought back again. Placed at its original point on the 34-yard line. Where it'll be second down coming up for the Stanford Indians, and they still have 10 yards to go. Let's see, defensively in that backfield, as we'd like to tell you who they are for Illinois, they're defending against passes. We have um, Herb Nethery at left halfback, Broski at uh, safety, Stan Wallace at right halfback, and we have Borio and Popa backing up. There's a wide flank around to the right for Stanford this time again. Corian fades back to his own 25, runs off to the sideline to the right to the 30, and he's being cut back on the 30-yard line. He couldn't find anyone to pass through as the red flag went down on the field. Down, down, down back on the 30-yard line for a loss of four yards. And let's see what the red flag is going to designate down on the field. Whether it will be against, it's a, it's a shooting penalty, apparently. Uh, and there's going to be... Um, a completion ruled on that uh, last play, apparently, as uh, Mathias was shoved out of the way as he was trying to receive the forward pass. So the ball will be placed down on the 41-yard line. On the 41-yard line of Stanford, where it will be second down coming up. Well, let's check that and make absolutely certain. Now we're ready to go. First and ten for Stanford on their own 46. Corian hands the ball off to Hergesian through the left side on the handoff play. He pounds up to the 47-yard line to the 48, twists and goes over the 15, finally drops down on the 49-yard line for a pickup of five yards. So I mean uh, second down coming up now. Second down, five yards to go for Stanford on the Illinois 49-yard line. All is about 15 yards in from the sideline across the way. It is 7-6, Stanford over Illinois. Wide flanker out to the right this time. That's Ron Cook. Gagarin takes the ball, fades back. Gary's about ready to shoot it. Downfield it comes. It's completed to Mathias on the 40-yard line of Illinois. He's down to the 30, to the 55, to the 20, and hit and dropped at the 20. Hit and dropped at the 20-yard line. Mathias taking the pass. So that ball goes from the 49-yard line. Down through the 20-yard line for a pickup of 29 yards, and it's first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford. And it was figured before this ball game started that Stanford likely would take to the air, and they've been taking to the air here this afternoon. The ball is resting on the 20-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. Double flanker this time. There's Krikorian coming back, 
ready to shoot a pass, and he finds no one to pass towards the red flag, goes down on the field. He drives himself down to the 16-yard line and is finally hit the stop down there by Larry Stevens. But a red flag has gone down on the field, and uh, we'll have to know, we'll have to uh, wait for the moment to see whether it's going to be uh, Stanford or Illinois to draw the penalty. We're having a substitute in the line for Illinois. That's going to be Cliff Waldbeezer coming in for Stanford. He's the Van Nuys Jr. He's replacing Harry Hugesian. He himself goes out on the flank this time. In the T formations, Kukorian takes the ball, swings wide, spikes himself, and is being bundled behind the line of scrimmage and finally hit and dropped on the 26-yard line in Illinois territory for actually a loss of a yard. It was Bob Lanzini coming in there with Chuck Borio making the stop for Illinois. Bob Lanzini, the North Chicago sophomore, playing defensive left guard for Illinois, and Chuck Borio, Kincaid, backing up the right side. He's a senior at 190 pounds. So in the six-man line, the 2 one defense, those are the two men that operated on that one. So it's second down coming up and 16 yards to go for Stanford as they send two flankers out, one to the right and one to the left. The team in the backfield has Kirkorian coming back, trying to throw a long pass downfield. He holds it himself and he explodes right down the middle, running through the 20-yard line, fumbles the ball, and it's recovered on the 21-yard line by Stanford, I believe. Cliff Waldbeezer was in on that play. The ball was fumbled on the 25-yard line, rolled forward to the Illinois 21, and it was Ron Cook. Ron Cook came in to recover for Stanford on the 21-yard line. So that's uh, one way to dribble up five yards. So it's only 3 and 11 now, third down and 11 yards to go. So actually Stanford, I guess, was using 11 men and two pups. So we're ready to go here now with third down and 11. Third and 11 for Stanford, moving down to the 21-yard line in Illinois territory. Third and 11 for Stanford, wide flanker out to the right this time. McCall is put way wide at right end. Kikorian takes the ball, the quarterback looks for McCall. There's a long pass going way down deep, and it's knocked down. It's knocked down by Herb Nevery, down on the 8-yard line, the far sideline down in the corner. Herb Nevery knocked that one down. It was intended for Bob Mathias. So an incompleted forward pass has Stanford in possession of the ball on the 21, 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. They have fourth down and 11 yards to go, and with 8 minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the second period, the score stands 7-6 in favor of Stanford over... Looks as though we're going to have a field goal try. It'll be Gary Kikorian. Gary Kikorian with a vision holding the ball. He'll try to kick this one from the 28-yard line in Illinois territory. There's the snap. There's the kick by Kikorian. Is it good or isn't it? It is short. It is short. So the score still remains. Stanford 7 and Illinois 6. 7-6. Seven so the ball will be brought out now, placed on the 20-yard line. Illinois in possession, first down, and 10 yards to go. So the teams are coming in. Get ready for this one. And by the way, men, uh, let's see if Illinois can get going here. Stanford leads it by a point, 7-6. Tom McConlin, their quarterback, has a tight key in the backfield this time. Switches in wide, sends a man out in the flank. That's Karras. From the 20-yard line of Illinois territory, O'Connell takes the ball, feeds it off this time to the first through the left side of the line as he disengages himself from his interference, crashes from the 20 up to the 25, spins as his hit, and drops to the 26-yard line by Chuck Gasegian, who is backing up the right side of the Stanford line. He was helped by safety man Don Sanders. So the ball comes from the 20-yard line up to make it the 20 six-yard line for a gain of six yards, makes the second coming up. And about, actually about three and a half yards to go. Illinois operating from the T, sends a flanker out to the left this time. That's Pete Picaris. There is the quarterback, McConnell, handing off take fullback who pounds through the left side of the line up to the 30 and hit and dropped on the 31 by Skip Crist. Skip Crist from Palo Alto, he's a junior at 190 pounds, backing up the line. So the ball is moved up to the 31-yard line for a first down for Illinois. The ball is equidistant between sideline on the Illinois 31-yard line. I'd say right now they're coming over the Sierra Madre Mountains here. A little bit of a haze. And first down, 10 yards to go for Illinois in their own 31, equidistant between sidelines. Right end comes out wide, that's Rex Smith. Wide flank back off to the right this time. It is the quarterback coming back, throwing a jump pass to Bacarus. He's Racing down the sideline on the far side of the 40, and finally slips and falls on his own 45-yard line, running into his own interference. 
on the 45-yard line. One of those little screen passes just grouped over the head of the on-rushing defenders, and it was completed. The beat, Bacharus. I'll spell his name again for you, B-A-C-H-O-U-R-O-S. He's a junior from Chicago, Bacharus. With that uh, fear of your pronunciations of his name, Bacharus taking the Pacific forward pass. Down to the Illinois 45-yard line. Well, that means a gain of 13 yards on the play and a first down for Illinois. Ball is 15 yards in from the sideline across the ways again. The wide flanker comes out to the right as Rex Smith, the right end, splits wide and comes over also. There is the quarterback, O'Connell, fading back again. He's another one of those little passes. He gets it scores on the receiving end. He's down to the 50-yard line and hit it to 50, not right back to the 49-yard line. And I mean he was hit by a C. Jim, the defensive uh, right linebacker. So the ball is moved down now to make it the 49-yard line. So actually it's good for four yards on the play. Four yards on the play, and time is being taken out by Stanford as the ball rests on the Illinois 49-yard line with six minutes and 23 seconds left to play in the ball game. A second down coming up for Illinois. Four men, Pete Bacharis, and he has uh, really snagged those two little looping passes to very good advantage. 15 yards into the sideline on this side of the field. Illinois goes into the tee, sends a flanker out to the left. O'Connell calls his signals. The ball is snapped back to O'Connell, and he fakes a handoff, finally gives it to Karras. There's a wide sweeper on the left side. The All-American drives down to the 40-yard line. It's hit at the 40-yard line in Stanford territory and picks up two more as he moves to the 38 with Hokinson hanging on with Bob Thompson to bring down Johnny Karras. And it's another first down for Illinois on the 38-yard line in the territory of Stanford. Good for a 13-yard pickup that time on the part of Johnny Karras. The ball is about 20 yards in the sideline across the way. Bobby O'Connell called his signals now with five minutes and 50 seconds left to play in the first half. Sends a flanker out to the right this time on the T formation. Ends are in close. The ball is given this time to Bacchus. He's through the right side of the line, cracks his tackle, moves over to the 34-yard line. It's hit by Chuck Asijan, backing up the line for Stanford, and dropped after picks up one more yard down to the 32. Jack Rye. Of Los Angeles, a senior 200 pounds playing defensive left hand rolled under there to make the stop. Also, the ball is on the make it 33 yard line. Ball on the 33 yard line for a pickup that time of five yards exactly. Makes it second and five. Coming up for Illinois on the Stanford. They're 15 yards into the sideline on this side of the field as O'Connell holds his backfield in tight, then sends his end Rex Smith out wide as he pulls his flanker over to the right, takes the ball, fades back to the 40-yard line, shoots a spot pass right across the line of scrimmage that's almost caught by Rex Smith on the Stanford 18-yard uh, line. Skip Christ almost had his hands on it when uh, Rex Smith had it bounce off his chest, but it goes as an incompleted forward pass and will be brought back to the 33-yard line where it will be third down coming up for Illinois. They'll still have five yards to gain down in the sta on the Stanford 33. It's still 7-6 to six in favor of Stanford over... University of Illinois, and this is the 38th Rose Bowl game being sent your way over NBC from Pasadena. Tight tee in the backfield. Let's see if they shift. They do this time. It is Buckers who is the flanker out to the left. The ball is being handed off to the fullback, Tate. He's through the left side of the line, drives through the 20-yard line, and carries two men with him down to the Stanford 22. Finally, Don Sanders, the safety man, had to come up the hall, Bill Tate down. That's a first down of 10 yards to go for Illinois on the Stanford 22-yard line. A pick up that time of 11 yards. Down on the 22-yard Stanford line. Stanford still using a 6 2 one defense with four minutes and a half left to play in the first half. There's a tight team. Walk to a flanker over to the right this time. Does Illinois behind the balance line. The end is split wide. There is a fake handoff. Then finally it's Bacaris who takes the ball on the direct handoff and butts into the 20-yard line with Latham, King, Chris, and Cole all making the stop for Stanford. Ball is moved right down to the 20-yard line for a two-yard pickup. Right down to the two for two-yard pickup. Makes it second down coming up for Illinois. Eight yards to go in this series of downs. Ball is equidistant between sidelines on the Stanford 20-yard motions that the clock is to continue running. It does now. The ball is on the 20-yard line. Second down and eight for Illinois as they are about ready to come out of their huddle once again. The Seijin calling the signals for the Stanford defense as his team move into a 6-2-3 defense, actually. There's a 
High count to the left by the Illinois left end. There is the quarterback coming back to throw a forward pass, and he's thrown under and knocked down as he tries to get his pass away. Back on the 34-yard line, it was Roy Eady of Berkeley, the right end, who came back in there, knocked him down just as Tom O'Connell was starting to get the pass away. So um, it's Ron Eady coming in to knock the passer down. It goes as an incompleted forward pass, and the ball is seen taken back to the 20-yard line in Stanford Territory, where it'll be third and eight. Third down and eight yards to go for Illinois. The ball is equidistant between sidelines on the 20-yard line. Up to the line of scrimmage. On the balance line, goes O'Connell to call his signals on a tight tee. Sends his flanker over to the left as he splits his left end wide. O'Connell ready to take the ball. He does. Fades back to the Stanford 28-yard line. Can't find anyone. Then throws into the end zone over the fingertips of Joe Venasco in the end zone. Joe Venasco almost had that one in the end zone, but couldn't quite hold on to it. So it'll be fourth down and eight coming up for Illinois on the Stanford 20-yard line. Well, we still have three minutes and 33 seconds left to play in this ball game in the first half. And I tell you, when uh, Braven Dyer told us originally that we could expect a thriller here this afternoon, he wasn't kidding. Sam Rebecca has come into the ball game for Illinois, and that can mean only one thing, that the Illini, he's right in front of the goalposts. He may or may not be able to make it. Right now, it is Stanford 7, Illinois 6. We're waiting for the step to come back from Dan Sabino. Here it comes. It's placed by Ingles, kicked by Rebecca, and it is no good. Wide to the right. It is no good. The score remains Stanford 7 at the University of Illinois 6. 7 to 6. The ball is being brought out to the 20-yard line now, given to the Stanford Indian. It will be first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford from their own 20-yard line. And now along with Irv uh, Gustafson here, let's uh, check that backfield. Let's see, that's uh, Kikorian back at quarterback, isn't it, Irv? Yeah. Let's see, Kikorian. Bob Mathias has come in at fullback now, and we have Ron Cook at right halfback, who has gone off to the flank. And just as we line up, we have a substitute coming into the ballgame, Don Tate. Don Tate. There's a wide flanker going out to the right this time on first and ten on the 24 Stanford, and the handoff this time goes to Harry Hugazian, who is through the left side of the line and bucks his way up to about the 23, where he's stopped by Chuck Borio and Popper. Backing up the left side, that's Popa. Backing up the left side of the line. Let's see, the ball is being placed down on the 24-yard line for a pickup of four yards. So in the ball, in the forward defensive wall, we have Wojciak, Bershay, and Ernst, Don Tate, and uh, Larry Stevens for Illinois. There's Kakari backing up to shoot a forward pass. He's been stopped. He's been caught back and fumbles the ball on his own 15-yard line, and I believe Illinois has recovered it. And they will have possession of that ball if the whistle did not blow before the fumble occurred. So let's see. The ball is being placed on the 15-yard line and given to Stanford because the whistle had blown before Kikorian fumbled the ball. The play was Marvin Bershay and Don Tate. The two tackles converging, moving in there fast. Push back from the stop, so it's third down and 15 yards to go now for Stanford. Back on their own 15-yard line. There goes uh, Ron Cook out on the flank on the left side this time. As Kikorian takes the ball, Gary Fetty back to the five, being chased. He runs to the right, and first goal pass is dropped down by Joe Bernasco and Chuck Borio, both coming in. That was intended for Sam Morley, the left end of Stanford, and the pass was almost intercepted. Chuck Borio is the fellow who had his fingers on it. Joe Bernasco was the man, I thought, for the moment, who had gotten in there, but it was Chuck Borio. Chuck Borio, we have about two minutes and 15 seconds left to play. As Dick Horn comes into the ball game for Stanford. Dick Horn, the punter. Gary Kikorian, the passer. Let's see who goes back in kick formation. It is Dick Horn to stand back on the Stanford three-yard line and go into safety position. Is Herb Nethery and Alfred Broski for... Illinois. There's the ball back. It's a bad pass from center. He picks it up, gets a kick away. It's a nice one coming downfield anyway. And it's taken on the 45-yard line by Herb Nettery. He fights his way back to the 50-yard line. To the 50 -yard line. With two minutes left to play here in the first half of the ball game, with Stanford out in front over Illinois, 7-6. Now well, let's see. It's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. Get that ball on the 49-yard line in Illinois territory. On the 49-yard line, 
sideline. The ball is put over the sideline. Illinois sends the cracker out to the right this time, splits his end, Rex Smith way out wide to the right, sends his left end out. We're ready for the ball to be snapped back now to quarterback O'Connelly. Takes the ball, fades back, he's looking for someone to pass to. Shoots it downfield, there's a completion over on the 40-yard line, and it's Butler who snaps his way over to the 35-yard line on the far sideline as the season finally stops him on the Stanford 34. Oh, so there's a move down to the 34-yard line in Stanford territory. So that means that it's a gain of 17 yards on the 34-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for Illinois on the Stanford 34. Send a tight team to the backfield this time behind the balance line. There is a fake handoff. It is O'Connell fading way back, shooting a pass downfield. This time to Vernasco on the 30-yard line. He's hit and dropped immediately by Skip Chris. So there's a pickup from the 34 to the 30-yard line. Right 34, that means a second down coming up. Right down to the 30-yard line. That's where the ball is resting. 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. One minute left to play in the first half of this ball game. The 38th Rose Bowl game of Pasadena, California. Second and seven coming up for Illinois. That's Buckerus. The ball is taken by O'Connell. He fades back. Shoots a long pass way downfield. There is oh, oh, right. He dropped the ball. Joe Vernasco from Bishwaka, Indiana. Drops the ball on the goal line. Going back there with him was Bob Thompson. That was quite a forward pass. That would have been a uh, 30-yarder. Right down to the goal line. So the ball is being brought back now to the 30-yard line in Sanford territory in possession of the score is still 7-6. Stanford over the University of Illinois. They come out of the huddle on third and seven up to the Stanford 30-yard line with about 45 seconds left to play. They send a flanker out to the right this time with O'Connell calling the signals for Illinois. Takes the ball, fades back. He's looking for someone to pass to, gets protection. Fires one that is knocked down at the 15-yard line. Knocked down at the 15-yard line by Don Sanders, the safety man. The ball was intended for Rex Smith that time. But Don Sanders had that one diagnosed correctly. We have about 39 seconds left to play in the first half of the ball game. Score is 7-6 to six in favor of Stanford over Illinois. We've had a dandy here so far in the first half. Wouldn't have missed this one for the world. Glad we didn't have to miss it. Let's see, the ball 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. 40, about 39 to 40 seconds left to play as Illinois sends a flanker out to the right this time on the tee. O'Connell calls the signals, fades back. He's going to try another forward pass, fades on back to the 40. Spots one across the line of scrimmage that is knocked down again by Sanders. Don Sanders, the safety man, knocking it down. So that was fourth down and seven. That means that Stanford takes over on their own 30. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for the Stanford Indians on their own 30-yard line. They are leading here with 32 seconds left to play in the first half of the ball game. The score is 7-6. to six. Raven Dyer will be talking plenty about it at halftime. As he's over there, um, well, his fence is riding just about as fast as anybody as you ever saw. There's Stanford sending a flanker out to the right this time on first and 10 on their own 30. It's Kukoyan handing the ball off to fullback Matthias, and he tries into the center of the line on the delayed line buck and gets nowhere with Marvin Bershay making the stop for Illinois. So we have about 22 seconds left to play. There's 20 seconds left to play. 18 now. The seconds are ticking away here in the first half of this ball game. About 12 seconds left to play. Stanford's still back in the huddle. They lead 7 to 6. 9 seconds, 8 seconds. They come out up to the line of scrimmage. Send a flanker out to the left this time. There is Kukoyan fading back with two seconds left to play. One second, he's being bottled, gets a pass away. There's McCall leaping high in the air, and the ball is intercepted by Brosky. The sideline coming back to the 20-yard line, to the 15-yard line. Hit and dropped on the Stanford 15-yard line. Brosky on an interception. Almost got away as the clock ran out here in the first half. Bob Mathias finally caught Brosky and saved the touchdown. So at the end of the first half, it is still Stanford 7 and the University of Illinois 
six, and we have had quite our first half here at Pasadena. Well, everybody, I said a minute ago, we've had a tremendous first half. A lot of people have been uh, jumping right up from the seats, and I said a few minutes ago that he was chewing at his hat brim, and I wasn't kidding. This guy, Braven Dyer, has been seeing a game that he has so far predicted. Braven, how about this first half, buddy? Well, you take a little breather there. You've been working just about as hard as those players out on the field. And the score is Stanford 7, Illinois 6, in a, a tremendous game in which Illinois scored first, missed the conversion, and then Stanford scored, and Gary Kikorian kicked the conversion, making the score 7-6. to six. That all happened in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, each team tried a field goal. Kikorian first from the 28, it was short, and then Rebecca from the 27, and it was wide to the right. So that's the way she stands 7-6, to six. and we have some fun sports figures here to talk to you at halftime and tell you what they think of this game. First of all is that very famous and wonderful sports writer from New York, known all over the world, Grantland Rice. Granny, how do you see the game thus far? Brilliant, uh, Braven, I think this is really one of the most brilliant first halves that I've seen anyway. I mean, each using his own type of phrase, the Illinois attack was a beautiful running attack. Didn't you think so? Yes, it is. And I think Stanford's passing attack is one of the finest things I've seen, especially McCall handling two plays almost impossible. Can you look in your, into your crystal ball and see anything uh, for this half other than more thrills? Any particular prediction? I don't believe any. I don't believe the old Delphi Oracle I used to know very well could pick this game the way it's going. Anybody can win. Well, I'd agree with you on that. And we're very happy to have you out here, Granny, and we hope you'll be back time and time again to see the Rose Bowl well, game. Thank you, Braven. It's always nice to come back just to see you. I'll tell you that. But this game today is really worth seeing because this is a very fine football game. But no prediction on the second half. No, I couldn't make it, Braven. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Grantland Rice. Uh, Granny has seen uh, a great number of the Rose Bowl games, and uh, he writes uh, some very wonderful articles about football and all, all other sports. I know of no my, a finer man in uh, sports writing today than Grantham Drive. And half, and here's Al Helper back from a little refresher uh, to take over for you. Come in, Al. All right, Braven. All ready to go here in the second half. We'll have that kickoff in just a moment. Let's check the lineups for you for the start of the second half. It will be the same ball clubs starting the ball game originally. Illinois. He moves forward, boots from the 40. The ball comes downfield and is taken down at the 25 yard line, back to the 30 to the 34-yard line before the ball carrier is dropped. That ball carrier was Skip Christ, incidentally. Skip Christ down to the 30, make it 5-yard line, where it's first down and 10 yards to go. For Stanford on their own 35. They open the second half here by defending the goal to our right, which is a southern goal. On in the flank to the right this time. There comes the handoff. It's time to the halfback. That's Cook, Ron Cook. Pounding into the left side of the line, gets over the 30, up to about the, or gets up over the 30 as he's caught behind the line of scrimmage and dropped back on about the 32. So that makes it second down coming up. There's a tight team in the backfield this time for Stanford. Uh, hand off very quickly over to the left halfback, Harry Hukasian, who pounds through the left side of the line, gets back to the 35, stopped by Popa, backing up the left side of the line for Illinois. Just short of the 35-yard line in Stanford territory. This time out to the left with the end McCall split wide to the right. Kikorian takes the ball and fires one out into the flat. This time intended for Bob Myers, the fullback. And he drops the ball on the 30-yard line in Stanford territory. Incompleted forward pass. So that'll mean fourth down coming up for Stanford. And they're on their own 35-yard line. Standing on the 21-yard line in Stanford territory. Broski's back in safety for Illinois. There's a nice kick coming down. Field. It's a high one. Broski waiting for it on the Illinois 22, takes it, comes back to the 25, and is hit at the 25, spins over, and gets down to the 27-yard line. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 27-yard line. And here it has gotten so dark, the clouds coming over the Sierra Madre Mountains, that the lights have been turned on on the far side of the field. They've been turned on, but there's plenty of sunshine on the far side. It's on this side of the field we're having 
just a little bit of uh, trouble being able to see. There's a flanker going out to the right on T formation, first and ten, Illinois, on their own 27. The ball being handled by Carlo hands it over to his fullback, Tate, who comes through the left side of the line, over the 30, moves up to about the 34-yard line before he's stopped by Cohn and also by Skip Christ, who comes in there very quick. Here's the Steel Bowl final, Birmingham, Alabama. Brooklyn, uh, South Carolina, 17, and Texas College, 13. They send a flanker out to the left this time on their own 34-yard line. O'Connell, the Chicago boy, handles the ball, gives it over to his fullback, Tate, who comes through the left side of the line, moves up to about the 37-yard line before he is hit and dropped by Esigian, backing up the right side of the Stanford line. Both ball clubs are using a 6-2-2-1 defense. It's uh, pretty close. It might necessitate a measurement there. Yep, they're going to measure for a first down, see whether or not Illinois has made it out to the right, sends a flanker to the right on his signal call, and hands his ball off to Buckerus, who comes through the left side of the line, cracks over between center and guard, moves up to his own 44-yard line, where Skip Christ makes the stop along with Chuck Cassijan. For Stanford, the two linebackers converging to make the stop. O'Connell ready to take the ball. He does, and hands it off this time to Buckerus on a come around. Without interference, he drives up to his own 45 swings wide at right end and moves up to his own 47-yard line before Dick Horn, the safety man, comes up to make the stop, along with Skip Christ, who trailed along behind the line of scrimmage and dived in from behind. It might be enough for a first down for Illinois on their own 47. To the left is the left end, Verdasco splits wide. The ball comes back and is handed off to take the fullback, and he seeks along the line of scrimmage, cracks in over his own left tackle, gets about two yards before he is stopped by Ron Eady and Bob Latham. Latham, a defensive tackle from California here, and Ron Eady from Berkeley. There is a flanker moving out to the left this time, a man in motion to the right. That's Tate. The ball is taken by quarterback O'Connell. He fades back a quick spot fast across the line of scrimmage. He's completed to Rick Smith down on the Stanford 36-yard line, where he's hit and dropped immediately by Chuck Asijan. Rex Smith, the Chicago boy, junior at 195 pounds, completing that one. The ball resting now on the 36-yard line for a pickup of exactly 12 yards on the pass. First down. Vasco splits wide. O'Connell up tight under center, takes the ball, hands it over to Tate. There's a pound through the right side of the line. He's still on his feet, moving down to the 20-yard line, and tripped at the 20-yard line, and down he goes on the 19. Bob Thompson, defensive right halfback, along with Don Sanders, making the stop for Stanford. There is a first down for Illinois. Down on the Stanford, make it the 19-yard line. On the 19 for a pickup that time of 17 yards right through the line of scrimmage. Second half of the ball game. A wide flanker out to the right this time. A man in motion over to the right. Is Bill Tate. The ball is taken and handed off as the red flag goes down on the field. Butler is battering into the line on the right side. And we'll see who is going to draw the penalty on this one. The play was stopped actually on the 17-yard line by Chuck Asijan and Skip Christ of Stanford as the substitute comes in for Stanford. There is a penalty against Stanford of being offside five yards, which moves the ball down. Bernasco goes wide at left end. The ball is handed over to the fullback, Tate. He spins, drives his way through the middle of the line, finally winds up on the three-yard line. All about the three-yard line, coming right through the middle of the line, and Bob Latham finally dragged him down, hit him from behind. That was Tate, spinning and driving, fighting his way through the middle of the line, moving down to the three. And a red flag has gone down on the field. It looks as though we may have a penalty being inflicted against Illinois. There it is for unnecessary roughness. 15 yards from the original point, which is the 14-yard line. Moves it back to the 29-yard line. Back to the 29-yard line in Stanford territory, where the upcoming downs will be the first, and there'll be 20 to gain. 15 yards from the sideline on the side of the field. Flacker out to the left this time. O'Connell takes the ball, hands off this time to Karras, who swings right at the left side, tries to crack over between his own left end and left tackle, and is caught by Jess Cole, the guard, defensive right guard of Stanford, caught at the make it 28-yard line for a pickup of about one yard. So it'll be second down coming up at 19 yards to gain. Flanker out to the left this time. He's called back as the ends of tackle both split wide, and there's a quick handoff to fullback Tate who comes through the left side of the line, moves up to the 25 before Cole again makes the stop. It was Cole and Cook both in there. So the ball is on the 25-yard line for a pickup of three that time. Deep on the Stanford 35-yard line. The ball comes back to him. He's looking his field over, spots the pass. Across the line of scrimmage, that is batted. 
by one man and finally intercepted by Jack Rye. Left end defensively for Stanford. He intercepts the ball on the 21-yard line and is hit and dropped immediately. That ball was intended for Pete Bacharis. He did not get the ball but did make the tackle. So the ball is in possession now of Stanford on the own 21-yard line. Let's make that. On the 21-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go on the interception by Jack Wire, the Los Angeles senior. Stanford Indians. Sends the flanker out wide to the right this time on first and 10 on their own 21. There's a handoff very quickly to the right halfback, Ron Cook. He's through the right side of the line, bucks the 25-yard line, and hits and drops right in there at the 25. So he picks up about four on the play as he goes down and is hit hard about 20 yards in the sideline on the side of the field. T in the backfield as... Gregor Corian takes the ball, face back, shoots a long pass, across the line of scrimmage on the 30-yard line. It's completed to Ron Cook, and he's knocked out of bounds immediately on his own 31. Herb Nubbery, defensive left halfback of Illinois, went over there to push the man out of bounds on the 31-yard line. So there's a pickup from the 25 to the 31 of 6. So it makes it now second down coming up. Wide right, split the call wide out to the right, to right end. There's a handoff in the backfield quickly to Hugesian. He tries the left side of the line and is hit. At the 32 and hit hard by Popa, backing up the line, and he's helped by Borio. Popa from Canton, Ohio, and Borio from Kincaid. It's enough for first down, however, for Stanford. And Cook comes out to the left this time. Kakorian takes the ball, face back, Gary fires the ball, it's completed, but then fumbled at the 40 yard line. It was Ron Cook who received it at the 40 yard line. Chuck Borio hit him so hard that the ball jumped out of his arms before the pass was ruled completed. So it's an incompleted forward pass, actually, and the ball being taken back to the 32-yard line in Stanford territory. There's a flanker this time coming out to the left. The Corian takes the ball. The quarterback fades back. He's looking for someone to pass to. Spots it across the line of scrimmage down to the 40-yard line, and it's completed at the 40-yard line to Harry Hugazian. He gets up to the 43. It's hit and knocked down by Stan Wallace, defensive right halfback, the sophomore from Hillsborough, Illinois, who is playing defensive right halfback for Illinois. So the ball is being walked back in on the 41-yard line. There is a handoff quickly in the backfield to the right halfback Ron Cook. He piles through the right side of the line. Looks as though he's made it by 20 for a first down up to his own 44. He was stopped that time by Popa. Also helped on it was helping on it was Bob Benzini, but it's enough for a first down for Stanford on their own 44-yard line. 18 in the backfield this time. The end is split wide. There's a handoff in the backfield. And a fake handoff in the backfield. And there's a forward pass being thrown by Kakorian way down on the far side to the 45-yard line. It's incomplete. Intended for Ron Cook. In there very quickly was Borio along with Herb Nethery to make sure that the pass was not completed. So the second down comes up now with 10 yards still to gain by Stanford on their own 44-yard line. Back in the huddle they go and will be coming up to the line of scrimmage to face that 6-2-2-1 defense being slapped up there by Ray Elliott's fighting a line iron. Tight T in the backfield otherwise and there's a balanced line. There goes to Curry fading back. He's being rushed now but gets the pass away spot. Right across the line of scrimmage on the 50-yard line to Hugesian. He steps for a couple of more as he runs into Illinois territory down to the 47-yard line. He's hit and hit hard there by Al Brosky coming up from the safety position. So it is short of a first down by about one yard. Tight in the backfield this time and a handoff very quickly to Ron Cook, the right halfback. He slips through the right side of the line, moves over to the 44-yard line in Illinois territory to make it a first down for Stanford. behind the balance line, tight T in the backfield. Kakorian taking the ball, takes one hand off, and then fades back with it himself. Throws a long pass downfield. It's intercepted by Illinois. And it's Van Wallace chasing back to the Stanford 30-yard line to the 25 to the 20. Hit and knocked out of bounds on about the 12-yard line. On about the 12-yard line. And the man who knocked him out of bounds was Mimugian, the left guard who chased the play all the way across. Van Wallace intercepting a forward pass that was intended that time for Bill Storm. And puts Illinois in a very good position. Right down on the 12-yard line. He intercepted that ball back on his own 40-yard line. Ran the ball down to the 12-yard line for a gain, or rather a run back of 48 yards. So it's first down, 10 yards to go. He in the backfield as he moves this flanker out to the left. Breaks that tight tee. Ready to take the ball, he does. And hands it off to Tate, the fullback, who cracks over the left side and drives down to about the 10. Bob Latham was in there to make the stop. Defensive tackle for Stanford. Tate was the one who ran the ball. We have four minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the third period. 
The ball is drifting on the 10-yard line for a two-yard game. Makes it second down coming up at eight yards to go. Field. It's going to be a tight key formation this time. Now they break out of it, go over into a flanker onto the left. There is O'Connell calling the signals, takes the ball, fades back, hands it to Karras, wide sweeper on the left side. A crack back off over the tackle, and he drives up to almost the five-yard line. The Bob Thompson, along with a Seijin in there to make the stop. The ball is being placed by the official, I believe, right at the five-yard line. That's right, Bob Latham was also in on that play. There's a five-yard pickup by Johnny Karras, the All-American halfback from Illinois. Third down and about three yards to gain. The ball rolls up to the five-yard line in Stanford territory. Score seven to six, favors Stanford over Illinois. Smith out wide to the right. Sends Buckers out as the flanker. He himself in the backfield, handling the ball, pitches back to his fullback, changes, swings wide around the right side, drives over for a touchdown. Illinois has scored now, and the score stands 13 to 7, Illinois over Stanford. It was a pitch out and a wide swing around the right side by fullback Tate. He followed one man interference, moved across the line of scrimmage, drove into the end zone, and Sam Rebecca now will drive for the extra point with Angles to hold the ball. Now let's see. We're about to have that ball snapped back by Sabino. Now we're ready. Down, back it comes. Down it's placed. There's the kick. It's good. It's good. And Illinois picks up another point. Illinois picking up another point. 13 to 7. Illinois over Stanford here with 3 minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the third period. Bang. There's something about the Rose Bowl game that sets it apart from other football classics. Yes, sir. And men, there's plenty about today's Gillette Blue Blade that sets new Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever hold. And there's a shot kickoff now by Illinois. Valentino kicks the ball down to the five-yard line. It's picked up by Ron Cook. He's back to the 15 and to the 20. He's hit and knocked back to the about 18-yard line as he finally spins away and goes down on the 19, hit by Johnny Bauer, the Benton sophomore for Illinois. However, the official takes the ball and places it on the 19-yard line where it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford. The score, please remember, is Illinois 13 and Stanford 7. Here with three minutes and 33 seconds left to play in the third period of the ball game. And Sam Morley, Flanker, out wide to the right this time. That is Ron Cook. Kukurian takes the ball, fakes back, fakes as always going to pass, keeps it himself, runs the ball back to the 25. It hits, spins, and drives over to his own up about 28-yard line before he is hit and dropped by Popa, backing up the line for um, Illinois. So the ball is being placed on the 28-yard line in Stanford territory. That ball was moved up for a first down. I believe it could be enough for a first down. No, it's just short of a first down by Buddy R. There is a wide flanker out to the right this time. It's two, second down and two to go. Kakorian takes the ball, the quarterback of Stanford, face back to his own 20, to running jump pass. Cuts the line of scrimmage, he goes to the 35-yard line. Popper comes in to break it up. It was intended for McCall. So the ball will be walked back once more to the Stanford 28-yard line, where it will be third down coming up for the Indians, and they'll still have two yards to go. The ball is 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. To the left, that's Ugezian. McCall, the big end, spits out wide to the right. Kakorian takes the ball. The quarterback fades back to his own 20, runs along. He is uh, to his 20 to the sideline laterally and tries to step away, moving down to about the 28-yard line where the line of scrimmage actually was. Then uh, is hit on the far sideline by Andy Wojciak and picks up another yard as he moves forward to his own 29. So it may or may not be enough for a first down. We'll see in just a moment. As the official places the ball, the ball is being set down, looked over, measured, and it's short by about a foot. There is the ball, snapped back, headed off to Hugesian. He piles into the left side of the line as the red flag goes down on the field. Popa makes the stop for Illinois, and we have to wait until they unpile down there. Borio is on the bottom of that pile, too. Now we'll know in a few moments who is to draw the penalty, whether it's going to be Stanford or University of Illinois. It apparently is Stanford drawing the penalty of five yards for being offside. Offside penalty against Stanford moves them back to their own 25-yard line. About 11-yard line, 15 yards in the sideline across the way on fourth and five. Ready for the ball to be snapped back by Tobin. Back it comes, a high pass, but he nails the ball, gets it away. It's a nice kick coming downfield. Bouncing on the Illinois 40-yard line. He's allowed to roll to the Illinois 35 and over to the 32-yard line 
on the far sideline, about five yards in where it rolls then. So down to the 32-yard line rolls the ball for a 40-yard kick and roll. So it is first down of 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 32-yard line. 13 to 7 in favor of the Fighting Illini over the Stafford Indians here at the Rose Bowl game in Pasadena, California, being sent your way over the NBC network. Now, let's see here. O'Connell, the Chicago boy, calls the signals, hands the ball over to Tate, who spins his way through the middle of the line. Moves from the 32-yard line as he carries Chris along with him over to about the 34-yard line. Ball just short of the 35 for almost a three-yard pickup. We'll call it... Um, We'll call it a three-yard pickup. Makes it third down. It's the second down and seven yards to go. Ball resting on the 34-and-a-half-yard line. Sideline this time as O'Connell calls his signals once more. Takes the ball, runs along the line of scrimmage, and hands the ball over to Johnny Karras, who comes pounding through the right side of the line, cracking off right tackle on a delayed line block, moving it up to the 39-yard line with Skip Chris, again making the stop along with um, Hawkinson, the defensive left tackle for Stanford. Time to flank back to the left. Once more, O'Connell gets his ball club in position, runs along the line of scrimmage, keeps the ball himself on an optional pitch-out play, and drives his way down the 48-yard line. Moving right down the 48-yard line from the 32. So that's a pretty good run there for that young fellow to the 48-yard line for 16 yards in the first down for Illinois. He was stopped finally by safety man Horn, or rather safety man Sanders. Sanders playing safety. He's a freshman from series. We've got... Uh, just about a second or two, and there is the gun ending the third period of the ball game. With the score standing, Illinois 13 and Sanford 7. Let's see what Illinois is about to spring here on Sanford. There is a handoff in the Illinois backfield. Right quickly, come pounding through the right side is Johnny Karras. And moves the ball up to about the 50-yard line. Right, right smack dab on the 50-yard line as he's stopped by Ron Eady. So it's the second down coming up now for Illinois as they've changed sides. And Illinois, of course, defending now the goal to our right, which is the southern goal. For Illinois, as they send a man out to the left this time on a wide flank back, split the left end wide, that's Finasco. O'Connell takes the ball and hands it over to Tate, who spins his way through the middle of the line and fights his way up to the Stanford 45. Running toward the sideline on this side of the field, he's dropped on the 45-yard line and hit pretty hard by Chuck DeSegian. Also, Bob Latham in there to make the stop for Stanford. And uh, from between Illinois. Ball moving down to the 37 for just a pickup of about uh, three yards. Makes it second down coming up and about seven yards to go. Ball equal distance between sidelines on the Stanford. Ball moving down to the 37 for just a pickup of about uh, three yards. Makes it second down coming up and about seven yards to go. Ball equal distance between sidelines on the Stanford 37-yard line with a tight tee in the Illinois backfield being hiked out to the right this time on the right side. That puts a flanker out on the right. That's Karras. There is a delayed line, but coming through the line is tight. Breaks out in the clear on the 30, and it's hit finally on the 25-yard line, but spins away from two men and drives down to the 21-yard line. Bill Tate, who has ripped through that Stanford line here this afternoon, has just ripped through it again and moved down to the make it 22 yard line for a pickup of 15 yards on the play. A delayed line, but for Don Sanders finally making the stop for Stanford. Stanford safety man came up. Of course, for Illinois, they send the flanker out to the right. That's Johnny Karras. Rex Smith, the right end, splits wide to the right. The ball is fed off this time to. Buckus, who goes through the left side of the line, pounds from the 20 down to the 15-yard line. Hit it to 15 and dropped right there. Pete Buckeris, the junior from Chicago, and through the left side of the line, moving from the 22 down to the 15 for seven yards. He just short of the 15-yard line by about a foot. Or it's actually second down about three for Illinois. 15 yards from the side out on this side of the field. They send the flanker over toward the sidelines, put the end wide. There is a handoff to Tate. As he comes through the left side of the line and bucks his way up to about the 11. Stopping the play that time was Asijin, Chuck Asijin. Also Ron Eady of uh, Berkeley. This Asijin is from Los Angeles. There is a flanker going out to the right this time. The end splits wide to the right. O'Connell ready to take the ball. Calling his signals, takes it. 
Hands the ball off to Buckles, who's through the left side of the line. Cracks over the 10 down to the to nine. As he's hit and stopped very hard by Kelsey, just Corn and Cook, all converging in there to make the stop. The ball is being placed right now on the nine-yard line. So it's a pickup of two, making it second and eight. Second down and eight yards to go. They'll flanker if they send the flanker this time. They drop to the left this time with Buckles on the flank. A man in motion, Tate, over to the right. The ball is taken, pitched back. Johnny Carris has a wide sweep around the right side. Carris being bottled on the 10. Fights and drives his way down to about the seven-yard line on the far sideline. He was knocked out of bounds by Jack Rye and by Skip Christ. The ball is being walked in now and placed on the seven-yard line. Being placed on the seven, so there's a pickup of a couple of yards only. I'll make third down coming up. Put the ball on the seven-yard line in Stanford territory. In possession of Illinois. We go back into action here with a flanker coming out wide to the left. That's Bacchus as the end splits wide. There is the ball being handed to Karras who swings wide around the left side. He's up to the five. He's driving. He's over. taking a handoff from Tom O'Connell. Came sweeping wide around the left side of his own line, the right side of the Sanford line, drove over from the seven for a seven-yard gallop, and a touchdown, making the score 19 to seven in favor of Illinois. And Sam Rebecca will try for the extra point with Don Engels to hold the ball. Nine minutes and 51 seconds left to play in the fourth period. The ball is snapped, placed on the ground by Engels, kicked by Rebecca, and it is good. The score is 20 to seven in favor of Illinois. Ready to go now with Valentino moving forward on the whistle. Root that ball from the 40-yard line. A high end over end kick coming down to the two-yard line. The fires at the two. Running straight up the field to the 20-yard line. His hip as he drives into the 25 and down he goes as his nose scrapes into the dirt. Bob Mathias coming back from the two to the 25 for a return of 25 yards, 23 yards. Mathias getting up now, going off the field. It's first down of 10 yards to go for Stafford on the own 25-yard line. Man making the stop that time was Waldbeater. The substitutions of the backfield for Stafford, we'll give them to you in a moment. The quarterback handing off to his left halfback this time, Harry Hilgazian, through the left side of the line, picks up two is Don Tate, the freshman from Newcastle for Illinois, makes the stop. So it's a pick up for two yards. From the 20 to the 22, here's the backfield now for Stanford. Bob Garrett at quarterback, a sophomore from San Marino. The left halfback is Harry Hugazian. Bob Myers is the fullback, this time over the flat. As the ball is being taken by Garrett to quarterback, and he swings wide around the left side, trying to get off that left tackle, cracks back over and moves up to the 28-yard line with Larry Stevens meeting him there and dropping him on the 29-yard line in Stanford territory. So the ball is moved up from the 22 up to the 29-yard line. Wing on the wing tee. Garrett takes the ball, fades back, goes a spot pass across the line of scrimmage. That is completed, or rather intercepted. But for the moment, it's been completed, but it's been intercepted by Stan Wallace. The intercepted right on his knees on the 48-yard line. I think it's the 44-yard line off Stanford. On the 44-yard line. So there's an intercepted forward pass. With Illinois taking over the ball on the 44-yard line in the territory of Stanford. We've got 8 minutes and 38 seconds left to play in the fourth and final period of a ball game that has the fighting Illini out in front of the Stanford Indians, 20 to 7. 20 to 7 in favor of Illinois. They go on the offensive first and 10 on the 44-yard line in Stanford territory. There's a flank back out to the left this time and a pitch back to take the fullback as he sweeps wide to the right and cuts back, disengages himself from his interference, clicks back over the right side and moves up to about the 41. Making the stop there was Leon King along with Bob Thompson. The guard and the halfback converging to make the stop on the 41-yard line. So there's a move up of three yards. Makes it second down coming up. Second down coming up. The ball has been moved back, however, to the 42-yard line. So that's where the official plants it. Tight tee in the backfield this time by Illinois. They're keeping that tee tight in the backfield. As Tate takes the ball and a handoff from O'Connell and pounds through the center of the line, moving over the 40 and drives down to about the 37-yard line, perhaps the 36, where Calfe of Richmond makes the tackle along with uh, Skip Christ. The ball is being placed now on the 37-yard line. 
On the 37, where the down coming up will be the third and fourth again for Illinois. There's a flanker coming off to the left this time. That's Bacchus. He's playing in behind. His left end, his left end splits wide. Fading back with the pass and getting a short one. The screen pass off to Johnny Karras over on the 40-yard line. Karras moving down to the 55-yard line before he's hooked. Spins along the sideline and steps out of bounds on the 21. Johnny Karras taking the screen pass off on the right side into the flat. And Lobster finally is able to knock him out of bounds over on the 21-yard line. I said Lobster, I mean Sanders. So the ball will lose down to the 21-yard line. Let's pick up that time of 16 yards on that pass play. And the pass patterns here for Illinois this afternoon have really been pretty good. Stanford has had some very fine pass patterns, particularly the pass patterns that have involved Big McCall and Ed. Tight key in the backfield this time being called off. There is a buck through the right side for Johnny Cash on a slider handoff. And he comes down to about the 17-yard line before he's stopped by Skip Christ and Leon King. Leon King from Sacramento, Skip Chris from Palo Alto. Johnny Karras, the Argo Express, carrying the ball through the right side of the line that time, moving it down to the 17. There's a blacker coming off to the left this time. The backfield is now set. Connell takes the ball, feeds it off to Karras, wide sweeper on the left side. Without interference, Karras is being chased. He's down to the 10, to the 5. He's hit and knocked out of bounds, I believe, on about the one-yard line. Right on the one-yard line. He's out of bounds. Ted Turner and Bob Thompson knocking him out. Karras. With the ball running from the 21-yard line, right down to the one-yard line. You know that ball can really carry the mail when they get him loose and get him started. So the ball is on the one-yard line where it is. First down, one yard, and goal to go for Illinois on the Stanford one-yard line. The score right now is the University of Illinois 20 and Stanford 7. And let's see what happens up tight close here at the one-yard line. There's a flanker out to the left this time. The ball is being handled by O'Connell. He hands it off this time to Karras. A wide scoop and he's caught behind the line of scrimmage on the line. Number four is the boy who did it. Ron Eady, the defensive end, who came knifing through there. Right back to the nine-yard line. Ball is on the eight-yard line. Eady made the grab back there on the line, so that moves Illinois back to the Stanford nine-yard line. Ball is walked in 15 yards from the sideline on this side of the field with six minutes and 15 seconds left to play. So the flanker moves in inside of him, inside of it, behind the line of scrimmage. There is O'Connell pitching out this time to take. There's a sweeper on the right side. Take, cuts back over, right side, and drives all the way down to the one-yard line and falls over for a touchdown as he tackled hard. It was Bill Tate. The fullback, the junior from Mattoon, Illinois, the 187-pound fullback who took the pitch out and swung wide around his own right side. Suddenly cut back as he clipped over, hit down through the right side off his own right tackle and stepped to the one-yard line where he's hit by three men but went over. Now to try for the extra point, Sam Rebecca, Don Ingles to hold the ball. The score 27-7 in favor of Illinois. The step from center. The placement, the kick by Rebecca, and it is good. The score now is 28 to 7 in favor of the University of Illinois. While we're getting ready for this kickoff, we have a few seconds, so we pause 10 seconds for station identification. And the kickoff is Rudy Valentino. He moves forward on the whistle, up to the 40-yard line. Boots the ball, a high end over end kick coming down to the Stanford 10. It's picked up on the fire, so on the 10-yard line. He gallops to the sidelines on the far side, and is hit on the 15-yard line and dumped on the 16. Making the tackle was Don Ernst, the Chicago sophomore. So it's first down and 10 yards to go now for Stanford on their own 16-yard line. First and 10 on the 16 for Stanford. So uh, Illinois puts in their defensive unit now, which incidentally has been a fine defensive unit, not only for this ball game, but for the last five they played in the regular season. The regular team was not scored upon. There's Bob Garrett, the quarterback, throwing a screen pass. Out into the final on the 10-yard line to Sam Morley, the Sanford end, and he gets down to the 20 and over to the 25 before he's stopped by Andy Wojciak. The ball moving from the 16-yard line to the 25-yard line, right on the 25, for a pickup at time of nine yards. Let's see, Joe Cole has come in now as defensive linebacker. He's from Park Ridge. Joe Cole, defensive left linebacker for Illinois. Out goes Popa. A wide flanker comes out to the right this time. That's Harry Higazian for Stanford. The ball comes back to Garrett. Bob Garrett swings wide around the right side. 
He looks as though he was going to throw for the moment, then decides to run the ball, runs the ball back to the 23-yard line, where he's dropped for a pick up to the 24. Chuck Borio making the stop. Let's see what we have to do now on the 23-yard line. The ball is actually being placed on the 23-yard line. Stanford's 23, 15 yards into this, this sideline. Lost about two yards on that last play. Looking up at the clock, we see we have four minutes and a half left to play in the ball game. There is a snap into the backfield, and Bob Garrett flips that ball right down the big McCall at the 28-yard line where it's completed, and he steps out of bounds at the 28. They get the 27-yard line. It's going to be enough, however, for a first down, I believe, for Stanford on the 27-yard line. So it's going to be first down at 10 yards to go for Stanford on their own 28-yard line, Megan. You men who enjoy this broadcast will get a heap of shaving comfort and satisfaction with Gillette Blue Blades. Just wanted to mention that because that's true. On the 15-yard uh, marker in from the sideline, there is Garrett fading back, taking the ball, flipping the pass over on the 28-yard line. It is completed to Rupture. Rupture goes down on the 29, tackled to Chuck Borio. Joe Cole was also in on that play. Cole wearing a bit number 56. Ball resting right on the 29, 15 yards in from the sideline across the way. Now we're ready to go once more. Stanford goes back and huddles on their own 15-yard line. Tight in the backfield this time with Garrett calling the signals. Ready for the ball to be snapped back. There is the step back. And Bob Garrett takes back, shoots a long forward pass way downfield. It is almost completed on the 40-yard line to West Watcher, but he has it scoot off his fingertips and go incomplete and out of bounds. And the Wojak was, uh, was turning the play. Big number 80, walking back there, Chicago Junior, weighing 180 pounds. Number 74 coming in, that's Jim Bauman, coming in for uh, Illinois. For the Stanford Indians, the ball is right to the quarterback. He takes a handoff, keeps it himself, drives through the middle of the line, moves up to the 30, and that's where he stopped, right on the 30. We have a couple of new men in also for Stanford. We'd like to give them the names, Griffin and Powell at the guards. Griffin from San Francisco, a senior, and Powell from South, South Pasadena. We also have John Steinberg in there from Melbourne, New Jersey. Dick Horn for Stanford on fourth and seven. Al Broski and uh, Herb Nethery go back in safety position for Illinois as the kick is made. Dropping down on the Illinois 40-yard line, bouncing around on the 40. It looks like it may come to rest right on the 40-yard line, which it does. Right on the 40. 15 yards into the sideline across the way. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 40-yard line with three minutes and five seconds left to play in the fourth and final period here in the 38th annual Rose Bowl game at Pasadena. For Illinois, as they come up to the line of scrimmage, keep a tight tee in the backfield. Ball is stepped back to Kyle, and he hands it off this time to Karras, who slides off on the cross buck and drives to the right side of the line as he cuts toward the sideline on the far side, moves over the 50 and down to about the 47-yard line. We have a couple of substitutions coming now for Illinois. Don Stevens, senior from Pittsburgh and Youngstown, is in at left halfback. Clarence DeMoss. Clarence DeMoss, the freshman from Villa Park, Illinois, is coming in. Don Engels is now running the ball club instead of Tom O'Connell. That's Austin Duke. Austin Duke has come in. Wide flanker out to the left this time on second and two. Illinois ready to put the ball in play. Engels feeds that ball off this time to Clarence DeMoss. He breaks through with that. And up to the 30s, to the 20s, to the 15, to the 10. It's hit and knocked out of bounds on the six yard line as he runs the sideline. Making the stop was Dick Horn. Dick Horn making the stop along with Bob Hoy and Tenefus. They were all converging over there. There's a boy down there that can really run that ball. And I understand from Al Tate, who is funny for us here this afternoon, one of these assistant coaches in Illinois. And this boy runs 100 yards in 9-8. Is that right, Al? No, oh, that's really moving in anybody's language. So it's first down. It's the first down for Illinois. On the Stanford, make it the 7-yard line. 15 yards in the sideline on this side of the field. There is a head off in the backfield this time. Over to John Stevens to shoot the right side and over for a touchdown. Score standing 33 to 7. Let's see who's going to try this extra point. If Sam Rebecca goes back into the ball game, he's the 
Extra point and field goal specialist, Burr Markford, the senior, 165 pounds. Sam Rebecca is going to try. Darl Ingalls will hold the ball. 33 to 7. Ready for the ball to be snapped back now. I believe that's Herb Borman in there at center. Is that right, Al? That's right. Herb Borman in that center now for Illinois. Ready for the snap to come back. It's back. It's placed. It's kicked. And it's no good. It's wide off to the right. The score is 33 to 7. Illinois over here. Well, let's see, according to the uh, stadium clock here at Pasadena, the Rose Bowl, in just one minute and 58 seconds, this 38th Rose Bowl will be history. It's been a real game. There is the kickoff now, going deep into the territory of Stanford, down on the five-yard line. Bob Mathias with the capital and Chapman, racing right back to the middle of the field, down to the 20 to the 25, hit by Captain Stidley at the 25-yard line and dropped right on the 26-yard line. One yard pick up after the tackle. So it's first down of 10 yards to go for Stanford. Ball resting on that 26-yard line. We've got uh, a minute, about uh, 45 seconds left to play here in the fourth and final period. The gazing coming out of the ball game for Stanford. Let's see who's going in his place. It's going to be Bill McKay, the senior from Rollins, Wyoming. Bill McKay, he's the flanker coming out wide to the right this time. Let's see what the coin does. It's not the coin, it's Garrett. Garrett taking the ball, fading back to sophomore, pitches one away downfield, intended for McCall, and he has to step out of bounds on the 48-yard line in Illinois territory, and then he cannot get it. It's an incomplete forward pass. A minute and about 35 seconds left to play in the fourth and final period of the ball game. Let's see, let's check that backfield here for uh, Stanford. We have Bobby Garrett at quarterback, he's a sophomore from San Marino. It's Stanford's ball, second down and 10 from their own 25. As Garrett takes the ball, fades back, throws a pass across the line of scrimmage, which is incomplete at the 35-yard line, intended for West Rupture. We still have a minute and 30 seconds left to play. Herb Bowman. Herb Bowman is also in the ball game for uh, Illinois. As it's figured that uh, Ray Elliott's given the boys all a chance to play. They made the trip out here, Illinois out in front, 33-7, to 7, with a minute and 34 seconds left to play. And what gives the guy a greater kick? Bill McKay now has come out wide on the flank of the right. The ball is snapped back to Garrett. He cocks his arm back to throw the pass, and he is caught by Jim Bauman, who filled it through the line and dropped him back on the 19-yard line. So the ball is resting on the 19-yard line in the territory of Stanford, and uh, we still have about a minute and 15 seconds left to play. You see that forward wall for Stanford. We have Morley. Make that fourth down and 23 yards to go. Standing back on his own uh, goal line in kick formation is Dick Horn. The ball is snapped back to him, and the punt is blocked. The punt is blocked, and there's a wild scramble for it on the three-yard line. Don't know who uh, blocked that punt, but I believe it was Jim Bauman. And recovering for Illinois was Tom Murphy, I believe. Tom Murphy. Check me on that, uh, I'll take. Tom Murphy. Well, we've got more substitutes in there for Illinois now. We can shake a stick at. But we've had a blocked punt now, and on the three-yard line, the ball was recovered by Tom Murphy. He looked as though it was Jim Bauman to block the punt, and Tom Murphy to recover. A couple of uh, linemen for Illinois. Engels calling out the signals now. Ready to hand the ball over to anybody. There is the handoff, and the right halfback is stopped. Uh, back on the six-yard line. It is Ken Miller who is in the ball game now. Ken Miller at right halfback. Ray Elliott just sending everybody in the ball game. He can get off that bench. Marv Tenafos made the stop back there on the six. So it's a loss of three yards. Let's see if we can't pick up that backfield for you now for Illinois. Tight key in the backfield as Engels calls his signals out. Ready for the ball to be snapped back. There it is, snapped back. And a jump pass across the line of scrimmage. It's complete. Number 83, John Ryan for touchdown. to seven right this minute. There's the step back, the kick, and it is good. Another point for Illinois. So here we are in the... Valentino is about to kick off now for Illinois. He moves forward on the whistle, boots the ball. It's a short kick coming downfield to the Stanford 25-yard line. It's picked up there. Uh, after having been fumbled, and John Bauer comes in to make the tackle. And the fellow picking that ball up and running it in very fast was Steinberg. Steinberg, the end, dropped over to pick that one up. 
We've got about 20 seconds left to play in the fourth and final period of the ball game. And the ball is on the 28-yard line. The world's number one razor blade. Today's Gillette Blue Blade. Delaying the ball game a little bit, cross uh, Stanford, uh, penalty down to the 11-yard line, makes the 12-yard line. Wide flag out to the right this time is Bill McCabe for Stanford. The ball is taken by Gary. He fades back to his own goal line, and he's been chased at the goal line, trying to get away. He's been still under on the three, hit and dropped on his own three-yard line. Jim Bauman in there to make the initial stop. Jim Bauman along with, um, let's see, that must have been Tom Murphy in there, right down on the three. That was Tom Murphy. We've got about five seconds left to play in the ball game. And there it is. That's all. The gun goes off, ending the 38th Rose Bowl game here at Pasadena, California. Well, that's all there is to it. The final score is Illinois 40 and Southern California, rather Stanford here in Southern California, a total of seven. Well, our good friend Braven Dyer will summarize the highlights of today's Rose Bowl game for you 